<clears throat> All right. Welcome everyone. And what the hell has happened to my screens? <clears throat> so isn't a day. I had all this working properly. The other one should be better be working. So I'm going to skew to it for a second. Oh, one second. Here we go. That's all right. That's, we're still working. We're still working fine. Hello, everyone. Three. There's three cameras set up we've got going here. I want you guys to have a proper look at what we're doing with this new PC that I've obviously built up last week and obviously had a few time, had a few. Had some about a week or so to clean it up, put a few more fans in here at the same time. So I'll get that running up for you guys soon. And then we've also got Talking Tech. So it's a new format I've been looking at doing it two nights. And um, hopefully we should be able to get a few things going on there. I've got the lights off at the moment. Well, it's actually very dim. So if you see it a bit more dull at this stage, we'll, um, I might adjust them a bit later on. If not, I don't want it actually. Because you guys actually get, never get to see my setup, my part of the setup. So this time, yeah, I thought I'll um, give a bit of a, you know, changeover in what we're doing at the moment and also obviously bringing everything up at the same time. Uh, talking tech is going to be changed. Um, once again, I know we've, we've probably done this a few times now, uh, but we're going to be doing, um, it's going to be a single show, it's just myself. Um, fortunately, uh, Ricky can't do the show anymore, so he'll be concentrating himself and on his channel at the same time. But what I'm going to be doing for Talking Tech Nights, and obviously I've been talking to the staff as well, been getting their sort of, you know their inputs and on the on the matter of what I want to change around. You guys seem very you know keen on to do for me to do a lot more tech stuff on on this on this channel. You know if it's benchmarking or if it's you know unboxings or you know live reviews, for example. Um, I'm more than happy to actually convert this convert this channel to doing more of that live, so you guys can see what is going on here at the moment and what we're currently doing at the studio. And obviously I've got the gear to do it, so I might as, I might as well utilize what I've got here, um, converting this onto, you know, onto YouTube as well. So a lot of things I can change around and hopefully you guys enjoy it. And if you guys have any, obviously, um, suggestions, put it into the chats and I'll get back to them either sometime today um, or, you know, during the show or even after the show as well. But how has everyone been so far? You see that there's been a few subbies on here. Thank you, Mr. B. Mr. B, he's a good man. So he's gifted a T1 sub to the Malapia and he's subbed himself to the channel. Much appreciated and welcome to PC419. Uh, who else we have here? We've got Alan. Hello, hello. Um, golf, golf. What's going on, buddy? And then I'm just going right down here. Mark is in here in the channel. Mark is actually in the Discord as well. He's back in once again. And Golf subscribe. Hello, Thank hello. you very much, Golfie. I don't know if you can hear Mark now. Go to talk, Mark. Let's find out. Yeah, can hear. Beautiful. Twenty nine months in a row. I actually hit. I just hit twenty seven months with um the slip flow today. So it was actually uh, pretty good. Let me know if there's any frame drops as well. Because before I had it running, I had some frame drops. So let me know in the chat if there's any issues. Because how this rig, I've actually got a rig set up. So everything's running off my main my main rig. So the one. Can you see it on this one? No, it's walked behind here. Um, but I'm running a HD60S on this screen, which you guys will see now. So when I convert over to this side, for example, you're going to see this. So this is what I can see on here. Um, so we'll run, some, we'll run through some of the benchmarks, um, what I obviously can do, and we'll have a few games on here as well. I tried to get as many games as I can possible today. There is a few updates on a few of them, so it didn't give me a chance to actually update the ones that I wanted. Um, this particular person who wanted this PC is in love with Elder Scrolls, so I thought I'll give a bit of an Elder Scrolls theme um, wallpaper at the same time. But um, before we do, to do that, we'll uh, get in some of the topics as well for tonight. So there isn't hell of a lot to get through tonight, but uh, what I want to sort of do is mix it up with you guys in regarding to do some pretty much some talking tech, some hardware reviews, um, unboxings. I've got about maybe six or seven products that I need to do as well. So now I'm going to be concentrating on this so I can finalize this and finish it off. And then um, the other schedule shows I'll be looking at doing will be more unboxings. I've got some Aorus products coming in. I've got another, well, I've got an Aorus monitor. I've got an external GPU from Aorus. And then I've also got a G15 laptop coming in, um, hopefully being the end of the week. Um, I also got an RTX 2080 Super coming in and another AMD motherboard from Aorus. 
Um, you've got a few other products as well. I've got the NVIDIA products here as well. I've got the Yeti, um, which one is the Yeti Nano. So I might even do, a, do, do all that live as well. Just hook it up to the monitor, see how it goes. And yeah, so there's going to be a lot, of, a lot of new changes coming to the channel. I hope you guys enjoy it. And um, yeah, and if there's any suggestions like you want me to do, let me know. Um, damn it, Dragon is crazy. Yeah, it's from Elder Scrolls. Uh, some new CPU reviews, mate. Yes, new CPUs coming in. So um, I'm in the review cycle for the 3100 and the 3300X from, um, from AMD. So hopefully we get that maybe next week at this stage. Isn't that a top-end laptop? It is, yeah. So I've done the, um, the Aura 17Y. So it's actually the 15G, I think. It's the Aura 15G. G. Yeah, so it's about a $3,000 laptop. Yeah, about a $3,000 laptop. I'll bring it in here now. Yeah, I'll take the crap shirt. So, and it's a ten, new 10th generation as well, that it said to me. So I'll give you guys a bit of an update on that. So this is the sort of laptop that they're actually sending me down. Um, so we're on OS 15, but this is the 9th gen here. I've currently, they're supposed to be sending me the 10th gen one. Hopefully, um, it's the 10th gen. I'll have a quick look at my emails later because I've already got the... Um, spec on it already so it's gonna be one of these so it'd be good to see laptop reviews i really don't want i really don't want using them so it's gonna be another good thing to look at as well and that is on the wrong camera that's enough change it later researching cameras how'd you go i think the brand could be the thing because this is the brand here um obviously you need good lighting regardless of it um but depending on what you're using it for is going to be your main thing. You need a new laptop. I've got a lot of laptops. I've had a lot of laptops in a lot of time. You're mostly gaming, a lot of high-end stuff. So depending on what you need, you use it for and what it needs, if you're playing Apex, I would say gaming. <laughs> um, nice. I've got 3700X coming soon, hopefully. Yes. Awesome. Name it's insane. I've been looking at the laptop yesterday. JB Hyper was having at the oh, it's 15 June. So yeah, it's a good laptop. Uh, what I can see so far. So, so they love the um, the review on the Aura 17Y that I did. And within a few, I think within four, three, four days, I got another email from Aura Taiwan, and they said, "Can we or um, can I do the review on the Aura 17 uh, 15G?" I said, "Not a problem." Fortnite place two one two. Welcome. Uh, what are you using the camera for? Which one? So like, why have, got, why have I got so many? So tonight, as you can see here, we've got an, I've got a rig that I did last week for last week's stream. So I built this live on stream. Um, I've been having played with it for a week and I'm gonna finalize it tonight. And I thought I'd give you guys a bit of an insight on what I actually do in gaming. Um, we'll run a few games in it. Nothing too top end because there's a lot of updates and a few games on here, which I needed to do. And just didn't get enough time to do most of the updates. So what I'll be looking at doing tonight is um, giving you a few insiders on what a 3600 can do and the RTX 20 Super as well. Um, and also just a basic thing. So this is about a $2,100 machine. So it's got the 3600, it's got a Carbon Pro um, B450 board, RTX 20 Super. It's got the Cooler Master 750 watt and this is the, t um, the TD Crystal 500 from Cooler Master. So pretty good case, um, very easy to work in, pretty much did the build very quickly. If I was literally not streaming it, I probably would have done the whole build in about half an hour. But during the build, people ask questions and so forth. So I did about an hour. It took me about an hour and 20 minutes to build this thing. And um, yeah, so I installed Windows, got it all going for him and installed most of his games that he wanted to put on here as well. So it's pretty good so far. Uh, crazy. The 100 on his for years. Yeah, well, look, most of my laptops, um, Atsuki, how are you going, buddy? Uh, most of my laptops that I purchase average between three to about six grand. They're, um, they're my laptops that I'm still going for. Next one I'm be looking at is the ZenBook Duo. Uh, it's more of a business laptop. It's more great to work what I really want for. Um, that's going to be probably my next laptop that I'll be getting very soon. Guru, how are you going? Uh, two for you, the essential streaming myself. Band music players literally have 15k's worth of sound gear. So I've seen the camera almost bought one today. Like I was, like I was saying in Discord, mate, you, depending on your budget and the camera, look, the Brio is good. This is the C922. So if you guys can see that, so the C922. 
It's okay. It does need a lot of light um, for it to obviously be effective. The Brio is probably one of the good ones. You can do it. You can actually re you can actually adjust it pretty well. But what you guys see here is a GH4. So that's what the GH4 is. Um, once you've got it adjusted up, um, I've got it manually set focused as well, so it's not on autofocus. You don't get that hunting. Um, it's an awesome camera. So it's and you pick them up for about 400 bucks, 500 bucks, but the lens I've got on this is about two grand. So that's where it weighs up. Uh, Rowie's on to you. Uh, looks like auto white balance is on. Yeah, I think it is, Rowie. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's, and it's the effect of this. So every time oh, I put my hand over a screen because it's trying to grab it, yeah, you're right. Oh, fair enough. So yeah, so I think what we might do is we might start off with the talking text type first, um, which I will uh, adjust this up quickly. Let me go into studio mode. I'll see if I adjust this camera. Because this camera is annoying me. Uh, let's copy this one. Second. Back. All right, so yeah, studio mode, and this should be fine. Yeah, that's good for now. And then I'll change this one, which is the current show. Slap it over for now. Something there. Okay. All right. Let's fix that up. Sort of sense. Bring it in a bit more. Okay. So there we go. So now we're on the Chrome chats. So to adjust the camera because it was picking up another camera for some reason, but it's all good now. We're set. So. Mark is here. So Mark Mephesto Hay is actually in the Discord. Say hello, Mark. Hello, everybody. If they can hear me. So I will um, so do a few things from here. Uh, I'll give you the links that we're, we're talking about tonight. Mark's just jumped in just to um, so, sort of be a second voice for tonight. These are the links I'm looking at. And I'll put it into the chat as well for you guys. He sounds better than me. Really? I'm using RTX voice, but I've got the kids, the kids are still up. My voice. That's all it is. Yeah. yeah, the kids are still up at the moment. So I really can't do much about that. So I've, I've had I've got I've no choice but to put RTX voice on. Uh, yeah, so look at this topic for tonight. So AMD threatens to wreck NVIDIA's launch party with a monster graphics card release. Um, now this is the Radeon Pro series we're looking at. So the Radeon Pro series is obviously is made for what editors use and so forth, and obviously more into the um, we'll say more the commercial market as well. So enterprise, and they're stating here that it's going to be an absolute beast of a um, GPU coming out. So, um, no, it's got sixty-four or something. <laughs> I should have been using this tonight because I usually use this when I'm, if I'm talking here. Yeah? I've usually had, usually have my Yeti X, but yeah, because I'm moving back and forward, I've got, I've got to use this tonight. So, uh, GH4, GH5, Sony cams, tooths. Yes, that's for, uh, that's what I would go for. So yeah, so looking at this now, so looking at this, G, uh, the Radeon Pro series graphics card. Now, according to the actual um, article here, which is from Tech Radar. Now, AMD have just revealed this new Radeon Pro V2 graphics card that has timed this launch coincidence, uh, coincidentally happened on the day of NVIDIA's makes big GDC Ampere reveal. So we didn't do much on Ampere itself due to the fact that obviously there was issues, not really issues, there wasn't really much information for our consumer side. So I didn't do, I didn't go right into it. Um, QuickTown did a lot on it um, as they usually would. But this time around, I want to see what the consumer side is going to be like once we get a bit more info about it. But this is stated for the um, obviously what what what, uh, what I was saying before more for editors and for enterprise side. 
But um, the name of the workstation GPU may not um, may, uh, may sound familiar because AMD have released the Radeon V2 card in the past. And like this product, it remains based on AMD's Vega 20 GPUs, which is seven nanometer, with this AMD's first foray on processors. So hopefully you should be able to see these cards come out soon. Not so much is gonna be for, uh, suited for what we do. Um, primarily, like I said, it is primarily made for, um, you know, content creators, editors, you know, video editing and so forth. But this card here is supposed to literally destroy that part of the market um, for Nvidia. So when it does get released, we should um, hopefully see some more information about that soon. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, this was an interesting topic that I've seen today. Um, so it was a few days ago, this one. So the OnePlus 8 Pro camera can see through some plastics and clothes. Uh, I don't know many people that actually have or actually even utilize this phone. Uh, do you know anyone, anyone Mark, that's actually got the One Eight Plus no. or or the One Plus? Say, series. Not really. So it's been discovered that the One Plus Eight Pro smartphone has a surprise feature that make you <laughs> temporarily feel like a superhero. As the Verge um, re uh, reports, it's possible to use one of these filters the OnePlus 8 Pro camera has as an app to go see through black plastics and clothing fabrics. Uh, I don't know how far this is actually going to get into the market and if it actually is true what it does. Uh, it? Right right there it says that the, the limits of the transparency offered mean this is definitely more of a cool unexpected feature than a privacy concern. That's correct. So in other words, yeah. It doesn't work great. Yeah, yeah. That's true. I guarantee it. Uh, the paper goes hard to buy them in AU. Like I said, they're not, they're not easy to find, but you can. I have seen them. Um, it's a glitch. Yeah, it's got to be a glitch. So, as Guru said as well, um, yeah, creepy dudes will be all over that. So, I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll actually have to see this. I've actually, I've actually got contacts so I can actually get this phone. So, I'm actually going to, I might actually try and get it into the studio and uh, see how effective it is against black plastics and clothing as well. So, we might be able to see a bit of a um, live view on that. But I don't know. It's Is it something that's bringing it up again? Like, do you think it's overseen from OnePlus or do you reckon it's just a, a gimmick from the phone itself or a glitch, as uh, Rowie said? Probably just like this is an unexpected feature. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. But either, that is the, um, the OnePlus Pro. Uh, the next one we'll be looking at for tonight is this one. Oh, here we go. So, Mark <laughs> loves Tweaktown. And we all love that. So, the reason why I brought this up is because the, um, the new 10th gen CPUs from Intel have been released and we're looking at some leaked benchmarks, which take it with a grain of salt as usual, but um it's going to be the reason why i want to bring it up because it does some, have some interesting facts and what cpus are actually playing against against amd as well um mr b goes how would a fight like that be in the market there's going to be a huge backlash for privacy well you never know these days uh they just sold 10 million units in the usa guaranteed there you go um, so going back to this, and I'm not going to go into the article too much, but the reason I want to go is pretty much go into the photo itself. So if you look at what they're, what they're um, up against, they're putting up against the Ryzen 9 3900X and the 3950X CPUs. So between them two as well, so you've got the 3900X um, from AMD, and then you've got the 10th gen, um, 10, well, the 10900K, we call it, and with Prime 2.10 version, it's just edging it out. Uh, there's, where's the other stuff? Where'd I go? Where'd I go? Oh, fucking tweak down, seriously. I'll go to um, Cinebench R15. It's going to be another one to be looking at. So Cinebench R15. So here we go. 3950X obviously is beating it at this stage as well. Um, you've got... So 3950X goes to 4,126 4, points. The 3900X is at 3,109 points. And then Intel Core, the 10 or 10900K is at 2,671 points. 
So bear in mind, the 3950X is a 16 core CPU. Um, and we're up against, a, obviously from Intel, is the, what are we looking at here? Who causes this one? Which one? The, so it's 10 cores. So we're looking yeah, at- 10, 10 core, yeah. 23. Yeah, that's right. So 12 core, 3900X, you're looking at 16 core for 3950X, and then you've got a 10 core. So even though it's got a few cores behind, in the bench itself, your CPU-wise, it is going to beat it regardless of it. Mm -hmm. But where it was coming closer and beating it in some points is, for example, some gaming. This is where it was right in there. Hey, Ricky, how you going, buddy? And then we've got, this is GTA 5 running at 1440p. So the Ryzen 9 3100X at 88.52 frames. The Intel comes in, the i9 comes in at 80.28 frames, and then the 3950X is 88.3 frames. So it's got some benefits out of it, but comparing it, this is my issue and concern at the moment. Intel have just released these, these CPUs, or just about to be released as CPUs. Takes us the grain of salt at the moment, but a third generation AMD CPU is still beating the next generation of Intel's. That's my issue. What do you think, Mark? And what are the pro and, the, and and also the prices as well? Going going by that, yes. But again, like you said, it's tweaked town. So how accurate are those results? <laughs> that's that's what I always worry about. Well, because they're they're testing it on like pre-release stuff. Well, yeah, that's right. Exactly right. But um, where else was the other one that I wanted to say? So there was the center benches, and then we got obviously Fire Strike as well. Yeah, it is, mate. It is. Uh, three D Mark Fire Strike. Um, as you can see here, um, the third one fifty X is just asking it by about three thousand points. Now the i nine is beating just the thirty nine hundred X by about a thousand points, but I'll say about fifteen hundred. Um. So I'm still concerned about this. For me, if I if I'm running a 900 k at the moment, I do not I do not think that it's actually worthwhile even trying to. You. Sorry, I don't think it will be for you. No, it won't be at all. So for me, at this stage, I as a per, for my personal build, uh, well, so we'll be doing builds here in the studio. But for a personal build, there is no point to actually even literally upgrade my PC. If you're running a 900 k, um, looking at these results at the moment. Um, I'll say there's not even worth upgrading because you're probably looking at maybe a 10 or 15% difference in performance. If gone from, from AMD, obviously running a 3900X, it's not a cheap processor. You're looking at an $800 processor as well on that. Um, the 3950X is going for what? About $1,300? Uh, 1300 yeah. Roughly. Yeah, and then there's... And then it, who's... It's weird, like the 3900 I've just saw there was like 750 ish and then yeah. it jumps up to 1300 for the 3950. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, looking at score tech site at the moment, I'll bring it up here. Thank you for the phone. Who's that, bro? Couldn't even say it. Uh, Nick Gurr. No, I don't know. Of. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the chat. Um, let me go through some of these things here. They're doing good golf. And then uh, we've got to come back to it. just really nice. Um, this is talking me. Uh, so the 10 nano not can as you can see here, it's about a twelve hundred dollar CPU. So actually, this is the Core X series. Uh, yeah, this is the one here. Is this it? No, it's not even it. Where are you? This one. Pre-order. So we've got an Oz PC market. It's about a thousand dollar CPU. Yeah, it's about right. Hey Andy, how you going, buddy? Welcome to the stream. So it's about a thousand dollar CPU, ten core. I just don't know. It's, I don't think the worthwhile upgrade. If you're going from say sixth gen or seventh gen, then I'm gonna say yes, it'll be definitely worth an upgrade. Mm -hmm. Um but if you're at ninth gen at the moment, I'm just gonna say no. Unless you're going from i5 to an i7, bit of a difference there. But do, you know, bear in mind, new CPU and new motherboard as well on top of that. I mean, no, to me, generally, like, you're not going to see a difference until, like, sort of the second generation after what you have. Yeah, yeah. 
Like I'm right. the same. I'm I'm an eighth gen now, so I'm just going to wait for the tenth, and then I'll see the real world results and decide from that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I agree too. I agree too. Um, Mr. B goes. I have an eighth gen, um, eighth gen i7. Well, that's what I'm running. Eighty seven hundred k, still going strong. It's still good. Yeah. Well, you know oh, what I'm like with my graphics and stuff. I don't have any issue with any games I play. So, well, Mark, yeah, it's right. Mark is still Mark is still running a um a 1080 Ti, yeah. Yeah, 1080 yeah. Ti, 8700K with an X34. Yeah, whatever. yeah. Is it dual? What's that? Is it dual? You're running, you're running twin 1080 Ti. No, just one X34. Yeah, and then I've got two uh 2560 by 1080 monitors either yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. On the one GPU. And it's still running fine. Yep. Well, there you go. So, so twelve hundred dollars, and you still need one hundred fifty dollars, two hundred forty mil AR to call it. Play everything at ultra. So. You would. Yeah, you would. Um, Andy, I've got a ninth gen i seven. I'll be fine for a while. Lock year, Andy. I wouldn't bother if you're looking. If you weren't looking at top tier, um, say i sevens yet, yeah, I've got like, like I said, I've got nine hundred k. No issues, no problems whatsoever. Uh, for me, for my personal build, I'm not going to have. Yeah, I won't even be doing it. Yeah, I think definitely if you're on ninth gen now, unless you're on like a lower like i three or something, yeah, then you might get you'll get a benefit out of going for something in the tenth gen. But yeah. otherwise, I'd just hang on to it. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Um, I mean, last or not least, Windows ten. So Microsoft stops releasing thirty two bit Windows ten builds for new PCs. I'd even know they were still doing thirty two bit. So 32-bit at the moment now is um, going to be finished up. Thank God for that. So 64-bit would be the new norm. <laughs> uh, most of the times I used to run 32-bit is for the ARM processors, but obviously ARM processors now can handle 64-bit. So it's literally useless to have anything at 32-bit. Some software you do download, um, if it's Linux-based, will be running on 32-bit. They'll be 64-bit compatible. Uh, but I think by the end of the year or so, everything will be demolished, everything will be taken out, and literally... Will be 64-bit, um, pretty much software, everything else. So I don't blame them for converting that because it is a little hassle. Obviously, um, redoing the software and um, obviously engineering the software for 32-bit and 64-bit. But just have a norm of 64-bit right across. Um, yeah, that's going to be great for them. Now we go, uh, Andy. I've got a 90, yep, and I'm still running a GDX 970. Yeah, that that's probably getting a bit old. Yeah, I'd say that, that'd be start the struggle with current games i think yeah i agree yeah, i agree well it depends what sort of games he's playing he's playing league because he just yeah. played a lot of league as well so playing league Steve is the 970 still be perfect for that anything Steve that's obviously esports related or esports gaming mm. um you've got oh. yeah that's totally fine to run a gdx 970 um but even till today depending on what sort of obviously monitor you've got as well but if you want to start playing the later triple a titles then yeah the 970 is struggling in the current games big time. I was thinking of getting a 2070 Super. Well, that's what's in here at the moment. You'll notice the difference. But the price is high. You've got that chance to yes buy. That's from at the moment now. People are sort of flooding the market to purchase selling cards and buying cards at the moment um, due to NVIDIA's release of obviously Ampere News. You're not going to get the card to at least, I'll say, near Computex where the new 3000 series will be released out. But if you wait maybe a few months, if you can hold out, at least till about September when Competex is released, then I'll say go for something else. But there's still cards out there. What, what, what you know, Mark's got, he's got the 10 ATI and it still runs everything perfect because you don't need to go spend big bucks to go get something. But you can go buy a 2060, which will give you, say, 10, 17, 1080 performance. I've still got the Galaxy card back here. It's a 1080 as well. Um, still runs fantastic at the same time. Facebook so, also, I've noticed there's a lot of 10th gen series cards selling now. Mm, Basically, yeah. like every, everyone's getting ready for the 30 series to come. Just so getting that just rotation ready. ready, exactly right, yeah. Before, well, they can still get a good a bit money out of it. Yeah. Well, you think about it, once once the, if the uh, 3000 series gets released, that's it. Like, you're going to have, um, it's literally going to be just, what, you'll be two generations behind. Yeah. Or well, third, the, three the, generations. The second, the second hand market's good. Like the prices for that will go down on the twenty series cards, but new yeah. prices won't. It'll go up. Okay. It always, yeah. always does. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. That's true. That is true. Everyone's selling their ten series before consoles come out to make it to make their ten series look better. <laughs> would too. 
They're pretty much um, the new Xbox and PlayStation are going to be 2070 graphics performance, which is pretty good for a console. Yeah, so I reckon it's pretty good for a console. How is this trend going, guys? It's actually saying it's I'm dropping frames, but it looks fine to me. Screen looks fine. Are we still good? Well, that price range and everything looks fine. Oh, beautiful. Um, yeah, like it all depends on your budget, really. You've got you've got that thing where you can actually buy either a tenth gen or even you know um, a twenty series card. 26 to 27, even 28 at the moment. Just look going for about six to between six to 800 bucks um, second hand. Uh, 27 is about 890, I think, brand new or 900 brand new. Um, so if you're not willing to wait, they're, they're already saying that the 38 Ti is going to be, and take it to the grain of salt, what we always say, um, a between 30 to 40 percent diff performance difference a between a 2080 Ti. Sorry. A big jar of salt, that one. Yeah, yeah. Well, we even said that 2060, <laughs> or 20, or sorry, that 3060 is going to be 2080 i performance. Yeah, but Look, it'll, it'll be believe. basically like in, in specific circumstances, like certain programs or something will get that percentage, but it won't be for gaming. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and you guys... 10 to 15%. Yeah. Uh, and he goes, I uh, uh, might just wait for um, and purchase a newer card when they come out, future proof purchases. If they say that the 3060 is going to be a 20, 2080i performance when that comes out, and if that's true, that is going to be probably the card that's going to be the mid range. Also, their, yeah, their yeah, low end card is going to be the high, 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 high performance of the previous generation. Yeah, that's true. That's a great thing, but I just can't see them undercutting their already top end cards that much. They've done it before. Yeah, true. They've done it before. When the 20 um, series came out, oh, sorry, when the 10 series came out, I had a 980 Ti. I had my 980, had my 980 Ti for about five and a half months before release, um, before the, the 10 gen came out. And between my card and that one was like a 30% difference, but talking about 1080 Ti versus the 980 Ti. So there was a massive generation gap between those two cards, but you can't say it hasn't happened before. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it would be. I hope it does. Uh, Mister B goes. Yeah, it would be. Wouldn't be for gaming the thirty six. Yeah, it would be for gaming. <laughs> it would be awesome for gaming. Twenty eighty Ti. It's pretty much what I got back here at the moment. Um, no freaking way. Thirty six will be on par. For... Well, that's what they're saying, Rory. And that's why. That's what's sort of thrown a spanner in the works at the same time. People are saying, so you're a low end card. The lowest card you're gonna you're gonna be releasing in a three thousand series, and so is going to beat the last generation's top tier card. But they're, they've done a vampire as well. They've, they've done a lot of changes to the architecture of that. And they're already saying there's going to be, what, I think 15 or 20% difference in RTX performance. 40% difference in DLSS performance as well. Uh, Recall, how are you going, buddy? Um, yeah, so there's going to be a lot to, um, to deal with at this stage. The 3060 will be 2070 at most. There'll be um, the Nerf memory bandwidth. Well, depending on what, if they use PCI 4.0. So if the new mobile ones that come out, the bandwidth on that, I don't think there will be limitations on it. Um, especially now when they're releasing the new boards. Um, maybe the next generation when they bring out DDR5 and maybe PCI 4 or 5.0, which are really in the in the works. Um, you'll get a bit more out of it. But the Ampere series is supposed to be pretty much set generation for the next two, three years for NVIDIA. Uh, are they? I think they are actually. Xbox. What's the new Xbox called? Xbox what? Um, yes. Uh, Series X. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. B. Let's see if see if I can grab some specs on this. There was spec. There was a spec thing here. Uh, yeah, it's running 16 gig of GDDR6. So we've got Zen 2. Uh, it's Zen 2, it's quad core, 7 nanometer, it's got 12 teraflops GPU power. Just pretty much compare that to a 2070 that they're stating. 
Uh, it's got a one terabyte custom NVMe drive, 4K UHD Blu-ray, and then going back to here is what we're talking about is the memory as well as a 16 gig GDR6. Uh, what the main support, what everyone's asking for is obviously is the 120 FPS support. So people, a lot of people, actually, do you know what questions I get asked a lot? Uh, particularly because people do have twin setups. They've got a PC setup and they've got a console setup. And um, pretty much what's top, what top of mind they, they can buy for their Xbox or for their PlayStation. So I say use it for whatever you use for your PC. It's going to be the same for your console anyway. So try and get a really good monitor to suit your PC and specs to suit your PC, not so much your console. But there is obviously the new TVs coming out with 120, 120 FPS support, um, 8K resolutions, ray tracing technology, um, variable, variable rate shading as well. Um, compatible with the Xbox One accessories and whatever the smart delivery is. I'm not sure what the hell that is. Ozzy, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, a used 1080Ti is still at 500 bucks for even for a 1080Ti. That's not bad though. Yeah. Oh, that, I think that's American though, is it? Mm, no, it'll be Aussie. That's Aussie. That's definitely Aussie. That's definitely Aussie. Is anyone here in the chat actually going to be looking at the um, the Xbox Series X? Going to be buying one of those when they get released? I'll have to at that price. <laughs> um, is anyone in the chat looking at buying the new Xbox Series X? I'm not going to ask you, Mark. I'm going to bother. <laughs> Fortnite players says yes. Should I actually do a vote on that? Um, can I do a votes on this? Oh, I did have a thing here for votes. Now I can add it on here. Where did I see it? Oh, I'll do it later. I'll set, yeah, I'll set, the, I'll set the channel properly. I might actually do it. I might start doing the votes in the, actual, in the chat here so you guys can actually do it there. I can give in to the console thing for the right game though. I did, I did it for the PS4. Spider-Man come out and I had to get it. So that's the reason why you bought it, PS4, just for Spider-Man? And then Red Dead 2 was coming out not long after, so it was kind of like a two for one. Buy. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Is anyone actually, actually, that's, that's a really good, that's a really good topic. Has anyone in the chat here actually bought a console specifically just for one game? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> buy for <from> Mark. <laughs> I buy lots of things just for one thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Microsoft are putting all their games on Xbox Live for PC. There's no point buying a Series X if you already have a gaming PC. That's true. Um, to they, if, they still do have Xbox exclusives. That's exactly right. Yeah, exactly right as well. Uh, two figures, if it can do something on piece on a piece of kind do, then I'll um, no doubt buy it. Uh, Mr. B goes, some Xbox Series X aren't compatible with the X One X original Xbox because of the CPU limitations. Hard drive speeds and rumored Xbox games are getting announced next month. Is going to be the Series X exclusives. Love to see that. Um, Fortnite says no. You didn't buy a console specifically for a game. Yeah, I bought a PS4 for The Last of Us. There you go. I bought a PS3 just for The Last of Us. There you go, another one. <laughs> that was it. Um, just for that game alone. Really? Fuck, there you a go. A lot of people will do that, though. Well, I haven't done it. Well, for me, I haven't done it. Like, I, I literally didn't buy any... I, 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 well, I haven't had a PlayStation since the PlayStation 3. I've had the... Pretty much every single Xbox that's come out. So I went from the Xbox One S to the Xbox X, One X, I should say. Um, so I had that. Uh, particularly for me to go to the Series X, would have to be certain exclusives that my kids want to play. Mm. So yeah. RIP Last of Us Two. Was it? Well, is it not no good or is it good? Has it been released yet? Sure. That's another thing as well. Leaked. But yeah, like, like I said, if I had to if I had to go for the Series X, um, yeah, nah. I um I'd only buy it particularly if there was a game out there that I couldn't yeah, that, see, buy for the one X. Something I want to ask about what Toofy just said then. Like that, that game was leaked for the storyline. Is that enough for you not to play a game? Like I'm I'm the kind of person like my brother told me the ending of Game of Thrones the last season because I told him to tell me, but I still watched it. 
and I and I still didn't, you know, it didn't ruin anything for me to know. Yeah, that would have ruined it for me. Mr. B goes, yeah, it's enough for me to not play a game. See, for me, do I mean, it as well. But would it be enough to make you stop and not even buy the game at all just because you knew how it ended? Yeah. See, for me, what, what matters to me also too, depending on, for me, it's game style and game play itself. So for me not to play a game, if I don't enjoy the mechanics of the game itself, first up, I'll probably play 10 minutes of it and then I'll stop playing it. Mm -hmm. um, I love open world. I love mobile. Like, I, like I love, you know, like for example, you know, World of Warcraft or Star Wars, whenever, you know, anything that's sort of, um, you know, open world style, I'll play it. I'm still, I still need to play Witcher 3, which I've like a quarter of the way through that. I'm like a quarter of the way through of the new Jedi game, but I haven't, I haven't You're played that yet. <laughs> Sorry? You're a quarter of the way through a lot of games. I think. Yeah, well, I am at the moment. Um, but I do like my online gaming. So for me, I, playing, for example, like World of Warcraft, so young at the time when I was playing it, and then pretty much just living off that game for the last, well, you know, for the last 15 years of whatever it's come out for, it's built me up to actually just play sort of games with mates, really. You know what I mean? Um, I sort of got off playing single player games pretty much when World of Warcraft got released. The other still sort of single players that I play is like, you know, Warcraft 3 or if it's an RTS game. Um, I love the Total War series. I can sit there for hours and hours and hours and weeks and play the Total War series. So I absolutely love those sort of games. Starcraft 2, I've played a lot of that as well. But I, I played a bit of online at the same time. Um, World of Warships, one of my favorite games that I um, love playing. So you guys would have seen the intro on that. Um, yeah, but they're the sort of games I actually enjoy playing. And that's just me personally. Like, I, I, I really can't get into single player games. I've got to have time for it, really. That's, that's um, the biggest thing. I think that's why I like them because I, I have a lot more time than most people kind of thing for the gaming side. Yeah, yeah. So, As Mr. B uh, said, I, Age of Empires. Yeah, can't wait I for that. Yeah, I was into a game, no problem. And I, and I love that side of it. Yeah. Do you, do you remember Age of Empires when it was in a catalog box? <laughs> <laughs> you get the CD, you get the, the Kellogg CD with, with Age of Empires on it. I remember that. Um, there's a new Age of Empires getting announced next month. I loved Age of Empires. So did I, mate. Uh, Tiff, you guys are exactly the same. Yeah, it's just, I think it's just our generation, Tiff, as well. Like, we're, we're very similar in age, so it's just one of those things. Uh, GTA 5, so I actually started playing GTA 5, but then I couldn't play it as a single player mode. I had to play it like, online with other people. Um, I enjoy it. I actually played it for a few weeks. Uh, but I got off it. But Cuppy um, is in our Discord as well. He's actually got their own private server, which they're sort of building up at the moment. So any GTA Fire fans, head into, head into the PC419 Discord. Um, probably just at Cuppy, um, Cupcake Cannibal, and um, he'll add you to the server once it's up and running. And it's free at the moment. So I pretty much went to all my accounts and just went bang, download it, download it, download it. And you're the same too, Fortnite, yeah. Yeah, it's free at the moment. It's free at the moment. I have three copies of GTA 5 on PC, PS4, Xbox, and still have. You not play the story. I haven't got the story too. You know, it's actually a funny, funny, a funny thing about that. There was a, what do you call it? Um, like a conference, or whatever it is, you know, and we've got all the characters uh, in the, in, in people that played the voiceovers. And um, it was that guy from GTA 5, he's the main character. I don't even know, Steve or Cameron, his name is. Um, I'm looking at I'm looking at this thing. I'm, I just randomly watched it on YouTube. I was like, this looks exactly like the guy from the, the uh, front page of from the uh, sorry the what do you call it the ah oh, the game. Obviously, we, we, we the game. Trevor from the game. Sorry, Trevor. Is it Trevor? Yeah, Trevor. I think it's Trevor. Yeah, like the Trevor. Like the, yeah. He'll be like the dude. Um, if you saw, he still looks like the front cover of the game. Like, I'm, like, I'm looking at him, like, he looks familiar. And then it was him. And I was like, this, 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 this. It was like they actually got him, his face, his character, to actually play inside the character of the game. It was, it was a funny thing. I think, I think he just like cursed. He, the guy asked to curse at him, and he cursed at him. I don't know if you guys seen it on YouTube, it was pretty funny though. The guy, the guy that played Trevor in that was in Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, I love playing Elder Scrolls online. You know, I was actually a massive fan of Elder Scrolls as well. Um, and still am. Um, when Elder Scrolls online came out, I actually stopped playing World of Warcraft. And I think that was probably the game that just made me stop playing Star Wars at the time as well. And as soon as that got released, I love World of Warcraft, but I love the graphics from Elder Scrolls and also the mechanics from Elder Scrolls as well. I feel that it's a bit more open and a bit more, um, so you can do a lot more things than you can on World of Warcraft. So for me, between the two, they're actually like nearly on par as for gameplay for me. Especially PvP on Elder Scrolls Online just kills it. Yeah, I stopped playing it too. Like, I got back into it again. Um, like actually, we're discussing on Discord. And yeah, I just, just you know, I, just, I, I think I'm level 30 or 35 on my mage at the moment, and I haven't got back to him yet. Centurion, welcome. It's been a while, buddy. How you been? So uh, myself and the community members and the staff guys, we're looking at doing some community gaming. And last night we decided we're actually going to be playing Star Wars The Old Republic. So um, if you guys do want to jump into that, um, it's just something we're just going to just play. When we're playing, Mark said he'll wait for us and we'll obviously all have level ones. Mark's oh, I'm not, I think I'm level not 20 at the moment. I'm just going to start a new <laughs> character when you guys get there. But... <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. So if you guys want to jump into... Um, yeah, it's MMO, yeah. And it's, it's, it is free to play, so you don't have to pay for it, but you, there is limitations if you don't pay for it, for the subs. Yeah, I've been pretty good, buddy. I know, it's really fun, though. Yeah, too few plays MMOs. I can hope he does. Things I do <laughs> for the community. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, the Star Wars Era Public is going to be a game that we'll be jumping back into. It is an old title, and I've got that many cartel points on at the moment. Um, it's ridiculous. So, uh, just one thing that I want to jump into, and hopefully it's going to be um, sort of a go-to game at the moment. Um, some of the guys have not played it yet, which is good. Um, so, this is here. here. I'll put the link into the chat. So if you guys want to download it and we'll be advertising in the Discord when we're going to be playing this on, um, online, you're more than welcome to jump in. Um, if you do guys a few, a, few, a, few, a few days behind, it's Sith, buddy. We're a Sith. I would never go Republic or Jedi. Um, if you guys want to jump in and you are a few days behind us, I can um, shoot you uh, a few XP boosts because I've got so much points on that or cartel money um, to catch up to us. And then, yeah, it looks, it'll be really good. So... Um, I really can't wait for it. The cinematics on this game is absolutely awesome. I actually sent a link to the guys last night. There's about 25 minutes of cinematics, which is like a movie length. And I would literally watch the movie if they made movies like this. It's ridiculous how good they are. Um, how long did it took to get the lightsaber? Oh, nah. Level 10, Mr. B. I literally get from level 1 to level 10. Within about, no, it's just not actually level ten. It's at the end Ooh. of the first Caravan. When you leave, she gives it to you. No, no, you can get it earlier. You can get it earlier. In different one though, like sork. No, you you, you pay you pay you pay the you're, you're playing a sork, yeah. Yeah. No, you can get it earlier. I got I can get I can get a saber at level eight. Right, let's play. We'll play it. I'm ready. <clears throat> We'll jump into it with us. You're more than welcome. Yeah, and then you can teach me some stuff again because I've lost everything. <laughs> uh, well, technically, I want to get this again. I to do with my old items and stuff. I'm like, how do I sell these or break them down or something? Uh, I think I did, I, did, I just did a massive culling of all the shit that was in my um, in my bags and in my storage, and it's literally grabbed everything. And it's went straight to, oh, it could have been worth a lot more in the marketplace. I said, you know what, just get rid of it. Just sold yeah, everything, just clean the bags up and start over again. Dragging everything out that I didn't need. So yeah. I, get rid of it. I got so bored playing it on the original Xbox. Was this on the original Xbox? You, you might be thinking of um, Knights of the Old Republic. This is Star game. Wars The Old Republic. This is the MMO. Knights of the Old Republic was on the original on, on the original Xbox. This is literally like World of Warcraft without Star Wars. 
But, or ESO, but Star Wars. Or ES, yeah. But the thing is, on this, particularly, if you are playing on your own, not as a group, the storylines to every single class is so in detail, it's ridiculous. And then, obviously, you got choices when you, you can either kill people or you can save people, so you either go for more to the dark side, you go more to the light side. So the, the more, yeah, yeah. my Sith is full dark, and he's like level 60 at the moment. If you go full dark, your face starts to change as well. Um, it's ridiculous how good it is. Welcome back, Golf. Welcome back, welcome back. So yeah, if you guys are interested, I'll um, links in the chat as well. So if you guys want to download that, you can play for free, but like I said, there is limitations to that. So at this, us and the staff members are actually going to start playing this. We're going to be and streaming then, it as really well. The, the limitations don't begin until like around level 40, 30, 40, something mm. like that. And yeah. it's mostly like characters. You can only have four or something like that instead of like the 24 that you can normally have. Cheers, buddy. Thanks for coming in, Mr. B. And, what, and thanks for the subbies as well. Much appreciated. All right, so I think what I'm going to do now is we'll jump on into the rig. Have a look at some of what it can actually do, what it's, you know, some of the sort of limitations where it is, what, what we've done with it. So we are running the 3600X. Oh, sorry, sorry, 3600. And we're going to do some some slight gaming in this. I don't know how well it's going to be. Some slight gaming. I, I am limited to 60 FPS at the moment because it's running through the HT60S. But it's completely finished now. Winners is installed on here, as you guys can see on the screen as well. So we've got the RTX 20C Super overclocked. Um, we've got the 3600. We've got the MSI Gaming Pro B450 motherboard. We're running the Cooler Master 750 watt bronze power supply, and we're running the TD Crystal 500, and we've got 16 gig of Corsair RAM. We've got the WD 500 gig MVMe drive and a one terabyte. Is it the Q QVO QVO six? Uh, QVO yeah, what QVO 650? Samsung SSD in there as well, which is a one terabyte. It's a QVO something. I can't remember how it was. So as you can see from here, uh, what I have installed already is MSI Afterburner. Where are you? 970 QVO, isn't it? Nine, is it? No, it's a 6. I think it's a 970 or 670 QVO. I can't remember how it was. So as you can see here, we're running um, obviously MSI Afterburner to see what I've done so far for um, for the person who actually owns it already. He's not very computer literate, so I've tried to do as much as I can to make it as easy as possible for him just to turn the thing on plug it all up and just play his games. So I have run a, I've run the power limit at 116 and the temp limit to 88 as well. So it's given a bit of GPU boost to give it a bit more boost out of it. It has made a difference in some of the um, benchmarks I've already run. Um, games on this are pretty good as well. So I ran Doom Eternal on this, um, running on Vulkan. Lattice got the latest NVIDIA graphics on here as well. And uh, so we're running at 445.87. You can see it's an RTX 20 Super. So if you've got any questions about this, I've got my other thing on here as well. Um, hey, DJ, how are you going? Um, so if you've got any questions about it, put it into the chat. Either Mark or I answer at the same time. Um, or just you'll let me know if there's DJ, someone in there I haven't seen yet. In the middle DJ of the Bing Bing is in the chat. Welcome, buddy. Welcome. So we're just about to actually start. the. Um, we've been going for a while now doing a bit of talking tech. But now we're going to be looking at doing, which I might change this because it's probably a bit catchy. If you guys can still hear me, yep. Um, yeah, so got a bit of talking tech, went through some of the topics. You can go up the chat there, all the guys will put, will put all the admins of the mods will put the chats, the links, what we did previously into the chat as well. So you can have a you can do a bit of catch up or watch the vlog later on. But we are going to be going through this machine here, finalizing it because I'm, it's probably going to be picked up other tomorrow afternoon or Thursday morning um, to get it out of here. I've got a small video to do this on YouTube as well at the same time. But I wanted to go through a few things on here as well. So if you do buy an MSI motherboard, um, you don't have to install this. You can if you really wanted to. As you can see on the screen here, it says the MSI Dragon Center. It's not really a gimmick app. It does give some useful things with it. And you can control pretty much all the fans, lighting on here as well using the Mystic Lighting software. You've got LAN control. You've got gaming modes as well, which I'll put on here. User um, scenarios, so you've got extreme performance, balance, silence. So if I put this on the silent mode, for example, and it does change over. It will drop the fan, which I'll show you guys now. 
So you can see the fan has dropped down to, it drops down to about 25% or 30% depending on the temperature at the, at the moment. Um, but if you bring it back up again, through example, extreme, it will put the fan back up again, CPU does go a bit higher, and then CPU core clock actually jumps up as well at the same time. Uh, you can have hardware monitor running at the same time, so it does show a um, more, pretty much what the piece is currently doing as well. Um, so you've got CPU usage, CPU frequency, you've got your core clock as well. Um, you've got CPU core voltages on here, DRAM voltages, CPU core clock. Um, you've got the system, system information as well. The MOS temperatures, PCIH temperatures as well. So you've got what you've got on, here on your um, VRMs. And then it's got your CPUs as well. I have got one of the fans hooked up to the fan one. Reason being, it's, I didn't see it as a real issue. Port is right on the bottom here. I didn't want to sort of bring it around and just sort of uh, trying to shove it in there because it was, it was it's there's a lot of cables on here because I didn't go modular so I just put it in there and all the fans pretty much all run at the same speed regardless of it so the CPU temperature will so the CPU fan will run on a separate circuit so you can have 100% and bring the fans lower but all the other fans are pretty much running at um or well, at the moment now they're running 100% and I don't know if you guys can actually hear it can you hear it Mark? Not really. Yeah it's pretty quiet. So that's it there. And then obviously you've got Mystic White. You can change whatever light you want. I've got a set to a profile. and have got with a black and white theme on here. So I've got the white fans, done his cable, done his cable combs on here, all his cables, his extensions. And obviously this isn't the proper wave cooler on here. It's a smaller version of this. The, the other one is a larger cooler and it does light, AMD does light up and it's got an RGB fan in there. But I'm actually liking the aesthetics of this. He's not really an RGB fanatic, which is fantastic, which I really love. So I thought I'll just keep it one static color, keep it a white and black theme. And good thing the Cool Master, the Bronze Series is a black and white on the side here as well. Maybe you guys can actually see that. Maybe can. Yeah, oh, not really, but yeah, here you go there. And um, so it actually come really good. And even the front of the case, it's got it's like this, it's a crystal, it's a T500, it's sorry, the TD500 crystal. The front of the case itself, it's got like this perspex glass on there and it's like a diamond shape. So um, it's really nice case to work in. So case wasn't really that expensive as well. And the case was about 140 bucks for the case, 150, and it's pretty decent. You do get three 120 mil fans at the front, but you get no other fans as well. So you need to, you need to buy an exhaust fan and two fans at the top if you want extra fans on here. But the rest it comes with the intake fans mainly, and then purchasing a kit, you're probably looking maybe an extra 30, 40 bucks on that. But what do you guys think in the chat of the um, of the build so far? You know what it looks like. You would have seen a few photos on um, social media, but I think what we'll do now. It's a very is... tidy little build. It's actually got a lot of room. If I, honestly, if I had to custom work this, I don't think I'll have any issues. Well, what's it like with all the cables tucked away? Is Sorry. There much space below? Is there much space below and behind the board? Is that that was one thing Deadlux was complaining about with his case. Um, well, look, if you're running it like this with, with extensions as well, there's plenty, there's, there's still plenty of room. Yeah, yeah man, no. that's a lot of people with that extension. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Um, I'm not jumping to my Steam. I don't know if he's even watching, but if he is, that's that's an option. Yeah, yeah. So, I shall stop this. I might jump in with Doom Eternal just to give you guys a bit of a bit of a Sega here and see how it performs all right. The only issue thing about from my side is that I'm running at 60 FPS on this because I'm locked in with the HD60 because Robbie's actually got my stream machine. So I'm sort of locked into what I can actually do. <laughs> but for a $2,100 build, um, I don't think it's done, it's done pretty good for these, for this, for these days, for this day and age. I, most of the price of this build is literally based on this GPU. And then the other 1100 bucks is CPU, motherboard, RAM, case, power supply, hard drives. So most of the money is actually in here, just on the graphics card alone. So you can go to a 2060 or a 6060 Ti and probably drop this build by at least a point out of three, 400 bucks. Um, probably get very similar performance, but I know the person who has this, he literally doesn't change his PCs for at least four to five years. So I think this machine here, for the games he plays, by the way, as well, 
um, will be more than enough, more than enough. Let's go to... Do they have a normal benchmark or anything in these? Sorry? Do they have like an actual benchmark in I these? I don't know on this one. This one's I don't actually know GTA 5 does. Um, official, no. Usually they're think... like the graphics options or something. Yeah, I don't think it does on this one. The options cog down the bottom there. Where's that? Right down the bottom next to the back button there. That one? This is race. This is restore. Uh, video tab? Yeah, I was there before. I'm, I'm in video at the moment. You are a game. No, I don't think I won. So we'll go to campaign mode. We'll have a look at that. Let's go to. Oh, sure, let's go to new one. Let's go to new slot. Yeah. So as you can see in the corner, it is running Vulcan. And um, so GPU is running at. 50 degrees, 34% load, and the CPU is at 65 degrees. Bear in mind that CPU cooler has got the stock thermal paste and is also running at 100%. Fortnite plays, can it play the new games out? Why can't I see the chat? See my chat stop here. Once let me let me fix this chat up. Not working. Ah, oh, chat is. Uh, I'll have to on. Um, once again. Um, we also don't upgrade for like four to five years, five to seven years. I'm pretty years, so everything is dead. <laughs> I'm spending a bit extra to make it worthwhile. You can you can do it as well. Um, and if one, I can't play new games. Can I play the new games? That, yeah, this is it. Can play this. Look, this will this will play any game. Yeah, it's very right. capable. Woo! Took enough. The other thing I've been having issues with, um, especially with MSI Alpha Burner, it doesn't actually come up on the um, on the top left-hand corner for, for doing for some reason. It's like they've, it's like they've disabled it. Oh, what's that for the FPS? Yeah, so, yeah, it comes up on everything else, but not there. Oh, it's normal. I think mine's just through the GeForce Experience thing. Yeah, I could do that. What is it? Shift. Shift. No. Z, I think. Sorry. I think it's Alt Z for the experience menu. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I've got a thing on it. I've got, um, what do you call it? A, um, a fucking question. A question marker. I'm going back to where I was. Sorry. I where I was going. Yeah, that's what I was talking about, golf. What's that? Golf said, can't you Alt-Z with the NVIDIA drivers and put an FPS count over? Uh, yeah, no, I've got, I've, I haven't logged in with um, GeForce Experience because it wasn't my PC. That's why. Oh, fuck, I forgot where to go. Just remember you're only benchmarking, not playing. To... Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but as you can see, yeah, like it's be running at least on a 80, 90. I can see it from there, but 80, 90, at least 100 more. But that's actual, um, that's doing there. So, so wait, 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 without an, even an FPS count, like I can see that that's very smooth. Well, and I, and I'm looking at 60 FPS as well. So for me, it's even worse. So let me reset my Twitch app on here because I couldn't see any of the chats. 
What's the best game out? What's the best game out? Fortnite asks. It's a pretty relative question, though, I guess. Well, it depends on what sort of game you're playing, really. I'm trying to put the Twitch app on this thing. It's failed now. So this one works fine. We know what I mean, golf. Just one second, guys. I'm just trying to get this thing going. Let the site fucking shit itself. Can't see shit. <laughs> uh, primary region. Shit. Uh, maybe later. So this one jump into it. Uh, oh, I should have upped the FPS. Pretty sure they'd be able to win this one. Does it bring it up? I'm going to be locked at 60. X. Yeah. 9,000 plus. Is there a way you can just play this, sir? I am. We'll have to wait until this thing fucking loads up. I don't know. Right now, it's got everything on low, looks like. Yeah, I'll send them. Oh, fuck, it's lighting up. Three, 380 FPS up top there. I'll change it. Soon. I couldn't see the chat. Chat just locked up on my iPad. There we go, Come on. You should have the training mode. I think training mode just gets you in straight away. Who here actually plays Hunt? I've barely played. The only reason why I've got it is because of um, Slick Flow. I've bust my balls to get it for ages. I don't know anyone that plays. What's that? I don't know anyone that plays it. Yeah. Most of the games I want to play now is um change the settings. Yeah. I I was going to six. We just have five settings and everything. See if it does doesn't crash on me. You just got to max it all and see how it handles it. It's just crashed. <laughs> there we go. Right yes. This is on high. Fuck, I need the FOV back. This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where's the FOV on this thing? Oh, please say you've got it. Where is it? Where are you? Performance stats. They tell us. Let's see what that does. Um, game itself. Can you, can you toggle the FOV in this or not? Yeah, there. Field of view is back there where you were. Where was it? Uh, go back up. It might have been the advanced setting one, was it? <laughs> I got the delay where I've seen your screen. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't see it. Up the top of the game menu, game tab. Oh, here we go. Bring it right up. Thank you. That's better. All right, so you can see on the top left and the top right, I'm running both at the same time. So we're getting about 89 frames per second. 
Oh, fuck, put this in the crystals. And it's running pretty quick. Right now. It's already averaging what, 85 to 90 frames. Yeah, it's gone up to about 100 now where I am. That's on high, yes, we're on high settings as well. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Boom. Boom. Fucking recall on that. Oh, <laughs> big bullets. Shit. I'm gonna reload. Oh, I've got no bullets. Nice. So yeah, so we'll, we'll jump at about 125, 130 frames now as well. The hell is that? What's this noise? I think this is a big guy. He ain't gonna die very quickly. So I think one like the GTA 5 benchmark would be a good one. Yeah, I think got the um, Sins of Solar Empire as well on here. Oops, let's finish it. So yeah, about 110 frames, I'm getting roughly on that. I don't know if my chat's working anymore, to be honest. It's, it's, look, it's, look, it's crazy. I'm missing. Uh, golf goes. Um, I think this is the best game. The best game is the one that you enjoy playing. That's exactly right for that. And uh, we'll probably play this for a bit off and on breakup. Yeah, he did too. That's, well, that's another person I've seen playing this game as well. You're up to date on chat. Sorry? You're up to date on the chat now. Oh, sweet. Continue, go to this. So it's void up. You got 3D mark or anything on there? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I've got it on here as well. To me, like, those ones are like repeatable kind of benchmarks where people can actually compare against. Yeah, I actually ran a few before. Which I'll, I'll show. I'll show them in a second. I might even do that now. Um, so on that, so it's pretty mark. I'm going to say where to save it to. Even documents. So Port Royal. Um, oh, it's going to be. Bring it back up here. We'll talk here. Let's see what comes up. Port Royal and RTX. I was probably getting about 30, 40 frames, I think. It wasn't much at all. But then, like I said, it is um, an RTX base uh, benchmark. And it's running on full. So I might see about changing with that. The benchmark looks. My one go to is still just the regular fire strike. Yeah, this is still regular. So what's it running at? So it's 40 and 40. Let's change it to 1080. 1080 resolution. Um, we'll leave everything else the same. We'll graphics tests and let's run. Demo. Demo. So everybody's the FPS counter on. It did pretty good though. Um, for a 2070, well, I was running a 1440, so I'll be running at 1080 now. For some reason, it always wants us to run 10. It wants to run at 1440. You haven't seen this one yet? Yeah. If you haven't got a, if you haven't got an RTX card, it's yeah, you wouldn't you would you wouldn't be able to actually run it. So this is pretty much utilizing everything. It's RTX. All the RTX calls are pretty much utilized on this one. So the chestnut coming up on this as well. I'm going to lie. This is good. I'm going to bring the chat up on here. It's the wrong thing. Let's see if that works. Yeah, so it's fail to load clips. All right, so. Getting about 40 frames per second on this one. Uh, 
don't know why you guys can see it. Does it look pretty clear on your side? Yeah, it's just started on the video now. Oh, okay. That's where RTX is mainly based. You can see from here, just the shadows, the actual glare off the actual um off the ship itself, all here is where it's utilizing all the RTX calls. See, I, I don't know if RTX is good enough for me to take that much of an FPS hit. RTX with DLSS 2.0, the new version, um, you'll get probably another 40, 50 frames on top. Yeah, so that'd be more acceptable. It all depends how well you want to see the card run, like how well you want the game to actually play. And there's obviously not many games that play RTX anyway, but having this sort of, uh, so, GPU power. Um, I would like to see RTX on on um, Star Citizens to see how that would look. Do you think it needs it? <laughs> Probably not, but we still get to see it though. We well, definitely got to see. I just don't know what it would add to Star Citizen. I don't know. I'm maybe on the Chrome ships, like you know, flying past asteroids or flying past this you know a space station or even in um on a planet with with um mountains you know or yes. yeah so we got an average of uh 44.33 fps and we've got a graphic score of 9575 which is pretty reasonable we'll run the um the this one here we'll make sure it is let me put the demo, we'll do a custom run. We bring it 1080p because this is what we're running at the moment. Um, no fixed FPS. Triple bar free basic is on, that's what we want. We'll skip the CPU test. Actually, we'll include a CPU test. So I'm pretty sure you guys would have seen Time Spy as a, you know, as a benchmarking tool, but we'll see what, the, what, it, what it pulls on this one. So the FPS is grabbing. But for a $2,100 build, um, this day and age, prices obviously have hiked up a bit. Not many um, retailers are actually carrying stock. It was sort of hard to me to even put this sort of build together because literally retailers had no stock of what I really wanted. Um, but then when you're sort of budget crunching as well at the same time, it gives you that concept of, all right, this is how much I've got to spend and this is all I've got to spend. So in this case here, and what I would always recommend at the same time, it's just pulling up, um, recommend at the same time is literally your money is going to be on this. It's going to be on the graphics card, which is a bit hot. Warm. GPU yeah, is running 62 degrees. That back plate's doing, a, doing its job. <laughs> if, you're, if you're going for a, a gaming build, then definitely GPU you want to have the most money into. I think regardless, look, today, if, if people say it's for business, it's for gaming or, you know, what else you're doing, you, the GPU is going to be your main thing you'd be going for because eventually if you are a semi-gamer and obviously playing at the same time and doing more business, you've got to say, all right, I'm doing more business, I need more CPU power than I do more GPU power or do I need a balance? So a 3600, 3600 or 3700, 30, I reckon the 3700 X is probably the sweet spot at the moment of AMD on its current gen. If you had to go for a 3600, still a good CPU, as you see here, it's still pulling good numbers. Um, you still, like I said, what like I was telling you, like most of the money I put into it is really on the GPU. You pull a GPU out, it's $1,100 bill. Mm. So if you said, you know what, I'm gonna buy this machine without the, without the graphics card, but I'm gonna go buy a secondhand 1080 Ti for like say 500 bucks, right? It's a fifteen hundred dollar build. It all most of the money, like I said, this GPU is pretty much the whole PC on its own. Yeah, like Golf said, like that that is a third of your budget in GPU is probably about right. Yeah. Generally. Yeah. 
Hey, hey, thank you very much for the follow. Much appreciated. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're just doing some GPU tests on a machine I just finished building. Um, so I've just built it up on last, on last week's stream. Had a bit of mucking around with it. It's all Windows. It's all a few more fans. Ran some GPU tests um, prior to the, to the stream and done some gaming as well. A lot of the games I wanted to play actually had so many updates on it. I want to play COD tonight and a few other games, um, but sort of limiting what I can do on this at this stage. But after this few tests here, I might jump into a bit of WoW to see what I'm getting, what numbers I'm getting out of WoW, which would be ridiculous. Um, and then probably see from there. But as you can see here, look at, if you're looking at this, 2070 super running at the moment, so we're getting about 100, say 100 frames on average on this. Mind you, this is on high as well. I wonder what Galax paid 3D Mark to actually have the Galax uh, symbol on there. And this is the CPU test. Which is still good. I reckon it's, I reckon it's pulling pretty good numbers. As you can see here, when it, when it starts to actually build a lot more up on here, it frames are dropping now to about 22 frames. It literally grabbed all the cores at one time, so you know what, I'm just going to just put you through the ringer. <laughs> so we'll validate that score. So that, that, That's one of the tests that's always low frames, though, even on like really good CPU. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. So, so yeah, graphic test one, we got 100 frames, about 100, yeah, 100 frames per second, and graphics test two, we got about 88, and then the CPU test score got 22, but yeah, as Mark said as well, that um that score there, and we should, we'll actually try and compare it online, see if we get anything else against it. Um, that last CPU test will kill pretty much every CPU test, unless you've got like a 3950X or a 3950X, um, 16 core up or 12 core up. You get more out of it. Um, can you see where's the comparisons? Oh, because maybe because I use custom lambda to oh, okay. I need to run the test again by running on default. To get a, you, know, you get you get that comparison chart with everyone yeah. else. Yeah, I can bring up mine and see what my scores were to give you kind of a baseline. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll run one more benchmark on this. So we run here. We're on the fire strike on. So do fire strike. Ultra. Let's see what it runs at. You're welcome. Built my first PC. I'm still a novice, but learning. Well, more than welcome to join the channel and ask questions, whatever you like. If you've got any questions, do you ask away in the chat, and I'll do my best to actually answer them as good as possible. But welcome to PC419, and Golf goes, everyone's got to start somewhere. Exactly right. Welcome to the PC Club. Thank you, Golf. I had a chat here going right next to me, but it's not working. Don't know why. So we're on Fire Strike Ultra now. This is actually the first time this has happened. Strange. Let's see if it comes up now. <laughs> no, it says fail to load channel. Yeah, this is where it's pulling it. Getting about 20 frames per second at the moment. 26, 27. CPU and GPU are still doing good. Which one's this? Is this the extreme? Yeah, this is like the 4K one. Yeah. I might change it. I'd, I'd just go the regular, the 1.1 1 .1 or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, because it's a bit of a push on this. Tests there is. 
Uh, we're going PC. This is the one here. We're on this one. Yeah, so my activity feed on here is not working. I don't know what it is. Um, thank you. My girlfriend and I are enjoying our build. It took a while for though. I like a few months, but it's working. Suspect we ever paid because we bought a graphics card during the price hike last summer. What, really? What's, what's the system specs on your build, Paleo? Let us know. I'm very interested. This is a bit better. This is probably a bit more suited for it. So we're getting about 100 frames per second, 115 going up. So GPU is running at 60 degrees, 90% load. CPU is at 91% load and CPU is at 60 degrees. So what are you roughly getting on your 1080i mark on the on these um, on Fire Strike here? What was, what, was, what was your rough FPS? Do you remember it? Uh, graphics score was 30,061. Yeah. Physics, 20,987. All right, we'll, we'll see a comparison on this. People do that, even like um, a lot of the reviewers, actually, I, I still use it for today as well. Still using Heaven Benchmark as well. Um, it's a bit of an older one. It does put a lot of stress on the GPU. So it's not They're my two go tos for benchmarking. Heaven. Have heaven for basically just like the stressing of the GPU, just to like max it out. Yeah, they still say um comparison really. Yeah, they say that twenty the ten series and a twenty series isn't really utilizing it properly because it's too old of a benchmark. Heaven still smashes the ten series. I don't know about twenty. Yeah, I think twenty series was the one that they were sort of questioning about it. Because it was two ever power, two ever two ever power for it. Well, you had Valley, and then what was the superposition or something they brought in? Yeah, superposition, uh, superposition benchmark as well. I think it's going to go through the full demo as well. Let's wait till it finishes up and see what it's pulling. But remember now, getting about sixty frames per second or sixty-five. You guys have about a second delay through the stream. Another reason why I've got no audio on this, because I've been doing so many benchmarks, so I've, I've actually got a 5600 XT that I'm doing for AMD at the moment, um, which will probably be on next week's show as well. Um, the amount of time I run this benchmark and hearing the sounds and the music and everything at the same time, about 20 or 30 times a day, it just drones your ears. So. Just by default, I put it on, I take the volume out of it, which just shits me <laughs> hearing it all the time. Even for the Aorus, the Aorus the, um, the 17 wire I did a review on, uh, I was running these benchmarks for a good day. So that was a demo, now it's doing the graphics tests. I think that was one of the biggest reasons I bought 3D Mark on Steam. Just yeah. Like turned the demo off. <laughs> <It was> like <laughs> five like minutes to every test. Yeah, because oh, you, you can't do it in a demo, yeah? You have to do it. You can't. It has a play, it plays the audio, yeah? Well, you can, you can turn, turn the volume off on PC. Not the volume you can turn off, but the, the demo part. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't turn the free version. Yeah. Well, I'll pay for this. I, I just didn't turn it off. Um, depend, uh, at least you can walk away and get a coffee while it's running. Oh, I'll do it all the time. The only time I forget about it too. Like I'll run one benchmark and I should have run like six by the time I've come back. And you just forget about it. You literally forget. It's a very smooth run. It's actually not too bad. We're, we're, we're averaging over 80, 90. Well, that was around like 120-ish 
roughly in that test then? The the CPU won't be bottlenecking it, but it'll be limiting it, what it can do as well. Does that make sense? So you will have limitations on core count. Um, you will be having limitations on, you know, because uh, I've got everything stock at the moment. So it's running at about 4.1 gigahertz. Compared to example, if I had to grab this GPU and put it into my machine, running at 5.1, um, you'll definitely get a higher score mark regardless of it because that CPU running at 5.1 5.1 gigahertz is um, will give you obviously a better a better count as well, and obviously even FPS here. This is I think this is the CPU test. It's running about 60 FPS in here. This one's the second graphics. Oh, the second graphics. Yeah, oh, phys oh, sorry, no, physics. This is a physics test, isn't it? Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah, I'm, physics. I'm behind what I can see. Remember. Oh, sorry, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the physics test now. So I hear you talk this is, this is the combined test. This is what, this has got everything in it. Physics, GPU, and all. Yeah, that's, yeah, like what I'm seeing now is 60s in that physics test, which is pretty decent. Yeah. I think what, um, um, six six or something with the 8700K at 5 gig. Yeah, yeah. So parallel has got an 8700K, an RTX 2070, 32 gig of rip draw RAM, one terabyte SSD, two terabyte hard, two terabyte hard drive on top of my head. Spent a lot of money, spent a lot on the power supply and search protector too. Couldn't find much info about the power consumption needs, so we estimated high. Yeah, P PSU is the one part that runs everything. If it goes, it has the possibility of taking everything else out. Well, it depends on what PC you've got as well. So if you're running like an like what I've got, my I've got an AX five hundred that will literally take a a power hit so if your house you know loses power if you got think it will it will it will take the surge i had well look at the machine i had the i had the what was that built it was a cheap ass power supply that was in it. it came with it came with it came with the case um had one power surge and it blew the power supply i mean literally it blew it smoke was coming out and out of it and all Any power supply that comes pre-built with the case just throw it out yeah get a different so you was, I, that's another question as well. A lot of people have a look at that and see where people buy machines and they look at the power consumptions. Oh, is it going to draw a lot of power if I'm playing games? I'm just using it, so forth. Well, I, I think actually, what, actually, what, is... what score did you get, Mark? Or oh, no? Sorry, what score did you get? Uh, this got twenty five five four. Uh, twenty four one three five. Twenty four. Uh, let me have a look. Tw what do you say? 20,000? Yeah. So to match that would be my 4790K and 980, dual 980 machine. There you go. And again, this that fire strike is a scalable. Yeah, case. I know. Yeah. Like my mine dual 980 machine used to struggle with wildlands and then I got the 1080 Ti and it just smashes it. Exactly right. Exactly right. On the testing, it's about a thousand difference between the fire strike test of the two. Exactly right, exactly right. Plus I'm running this is running completely stock as a rock as well. So I've I've overclocked it. It's, it hasn't been touched, bias has been stock. Some of the some of the specs you see on here on other on other rigs here, um, you will get so this is pretty much where I'm at the moment. I mean, to get, to get a 20,000 score on a $2,000 machine is good. Yeah. 2,000 yeah. Australian, let's just clarify. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, that's another thing as well. So probably like a $1,300 or US or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. Power when it, when it blew, it was by chance I was walking past, I was, I was in, this is my study, my studio, and um, just seeing like a flash. And then all of a sudden, I can, was smelling smoke, and um, yeah, this power supply just blew. It's like I've had two go in an old Dell machine, killed oh, really? two motherboards, yeah, killed both video cards. I think one of the hard drives, and it was all under warranty. So I, I basically had that Dell replaced about three times. Just, there's point. an update on this. I can't. This, this just takes too long for the update. I'll jump in the way. I was just a bit of an old title and see what see what it can pull. I think, I think WoW and probably CSGO 
which we know we know CSGO is going to run fine anyway, I guess. So. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Let's save all the items for now. We'll just jump on to, well, here's my mage. When I was leveling up, it's level 38. It was higher than that, uh, lower than that. If you haven't tested Star Citizen. You can see, <laughs> you're going to see the GPU. I'm going to GPU might, won't even go above maybe 30 or 40%. <laughs> Oh, I'm in Orgrimmer, so I might jump a little bit. Orgrimmer's got a shit place to do it. Well, let's bring up the settings. Is that an ultra? Yeah, it's, everything's an ultra. Even still, though, like if that if that's at its worst, getting 85 frames. Um, yeah, this is in Orgrimmer. You're always going to get shit frames, no matter what 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 sort of PC you've got. Um, when you get out of it and you go actually get it out of Org, it's um, it's a lot better. Same time. Okay. I haven't got flying on him yet. I've got edible grimmer. You it should jump up a little Hagrid bit now. Sorry? Oh Hagrid over here. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Shopa. Pretty awesome. Hundred twenty. I have seen this. So I've, I've, I've tried it before when I was somewhere else. So I, I, I uh, teleported there. I was gone about two, three hundred frames. Trying an ultra at the moment, which is pretty good. Would this game be more based around CPU speed? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. As you can see here, CPU's the CPU's got a lot more than the GPU. The GPU's like running at forty-four percent, and the CPU's running at sixty-four. And that's for um, that is World of Warcraft. I keep if I keep playing, guys. I'm actually gonna I won't stop playing. And you're gonna be watching World of Warcraft for the next three hours. Well, um, so far, like a 1080 machine, like it's quite capable of pushing you know 120 FPS in some games. Oh yeah, easy, easy. I'll go into we'll do the last game for tonight. Um, actually, Grand Theft Auto has got a um, a benchmark, hasn't it? Yeah. It does. I'm pretty sure it does. I'll jump into that. See if they got, see if okay. I can get into it. Sorry? 1044 hertz or 1440 75 hertz ish, I reckon would be your yeah. Aim. Yeah, easy, easy. Um, plus, the CPU will draw the score back a little bit. Yeah, the CPU will draw it back a lot. Um, we had a house where the power must have been bad. My brother and I, blue PSUs in the same day at one point. They were, um, they were cheap, questionable. Yeah, well, yeah, you're going to get that. I don't think I need to log into this shit. I'll just go straight into it. I was asking to install it. No. Oh, we can't do that one. If you haven't installed yet, it's going no, to No, I've installed it. I haven't installed it. It's just not picking it up. But I'll play it here. Put CSGO on for the last one for the month. So I'll load. Road redemption in the list. Sorry, was that road redemption in the? Yeah, yeah, I got, I got, I got it, I got it for Mason because this the rich because the road rage one. Yeah, the road rage one. Yeah, um, I played it because I, I thought it would ruin my nostalgia of road rage. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, so I'll uh, play with CS:GO. We'll go to deathmatch. Dust two is my favorite. Don't judge me on this. I'm not playing. I'm not playing on my, on my normal mouse that I usually play on. Uh, excuses. Excuses, excuses. I'm surprised this actually didn't work. It's really pissing me off. Uh, loading screens getting about 360 FPS. 367 FPS. <laughs> Yeah. CT team is full. All right. Oh, fuck, now I have to jump in and I'm dead. All right. So we're getting about 230, 240 at the moment. You got a dude named Fuckboy, just, you know. What's up? <laughs> he just got killed by some dude named Fuckboy. 
boy. Yeah. Awesome. Like... <laughs> oh my god. Thank you for this shit. That's like, it's like World of Warships last time. Like when I, when I streamed it, it was just a shit night. Non streaming it, I was killing it. It's like every time I get you guys to jump on Star Citizen. Yeah. For like three months, and then you guys will get on one night, and it's just, just a shit show. We're getting about 250 frames a second in there. Keep it on the front cam, is it 250, 280? The lowest I'm seeing is like 230. And this would be on average, pretty much on all esports titles. So League, Dota, CSGO. Um, I haven't tested at Rainbow Six yet, but like I said, mainly when I just want to. Siege is another one that plays on pretty low end stuff too, doesn't it? Oh, uh, Danny. Fucking guy. Flop it. Play on the right mouse. Four. You can't let the start us. Drop a bit to 160, yeah? 170, 180. Yeah. Oh, that's enough of that. There you go. That's CSGO as well. So, averagely on that, what you'll really get on most of the AAA titles now, it's about two, 300 frames. Um, there's also Rocket League on here, but I know it's not on the same drive. Um, but for a $2,100 build, I'll run through some of the system specs once again for you guys. So 3600, 16 gig of RAM of Corsair. It's got an RTX 2070 Super, 750 watt power supply. It's running an MSI Carbon Pro B450 motherboard. Uh, T, uh, it's a TD500 crystal from Cooler Master. And it's got a pretty much a WD 500 gig hard drive, NVMe, and it's got a one terabyte Samsung SSD in here as well. And for the system, as you can see, as it stands right now, is about $2,100. So for $2,100, I don't think it, um, he's done too bad for his build for what he plays. Plays a lot of MMOs, so I don't think he have any issues with that whatsoever. Um, so from that side there, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm pretty sure he's gonna be very happy with it at the same time. And yeah, moving from that side, from moving that on. So guys, I'm actually gonna probably leave it there for tonight. Um, I wanna thank everyone who's joined in. All the subs, all the followers, much appreciated. As we do to every um, Talking Tech night, which is every Tuesday night, which will probably be, this is probably what we're doing for every Talking Tech. So guys, do get to stay tuned for that. Um, I do have sponsors for the show as well. It is Cool Master, and I'm not using it tonight because I'm using my label, uh, lapel mic tonight. It's Blue Designs as well. So head over to bluedesigns.com and head, check out their Yeti, um, well, their Yeti mics, and head over to CoolMaster.com. Check out their cases, power supplies, all on coolers, and everything else they've got on there at the same time. So I just want to thank everyone who's joined in. Marky, thank you very much once again uh, right. for jumping in for the stream. Much appreciated. But as we always do, we're going to raid someone. And who do you want to raid tonight? Who's here? Have a quick look. Um, is Slipfly still in? Is he still... Or is he off? Oh, Slick is on. Slick is playing Apex. Hit him a follow. Shout out. Right. Guys, thank you very much. And guess what? I will see you next time. And do stay tuned for our social medias, which I'll put in here very quickly. 
So you guys can actually grab whoever who does not have it at the moment. So we've got Facebook, we've got YouTube, we've got our Discord, and we've got our Twitter. So grab onto those guys, much appreciated. And we're gonna road slick right now. Awesome bloke, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you very much. Ha, 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 ha.